Stuart Rudd from the Super Jesus. Welcome to Australian Musician. Thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Uh, were you all, always a, a bass player, Ruddy, or did you start off on guitar? Um, it was actually guitar. I started with a guitar. I started playing when I was about sort of 11, 12. And then, um, yeah, I, I got to the point where my friends were getting a band together and they kind of needed a bass player. And I said, oh, here, let me have a go at that. Just to be part of it, you know. And then that's where I sort of fell into bass and I never kind of looked back from there. I always, I really enjoyed it and, um, you know, kept going with it. Yeah. Although I do, I do keep playing guitar. Okay. Yeah, I keep playing. Yeah, I, I like it all. Yeah. So have there been any bass heroes along the way, uh, bass players that have influenced you? Yeah, I think, um, you know, so, sort of starting out visually and for impact, um, I first I first saw uh, or first heard Kiss Alive and, you know, <laughs> that sort of got me into playing, um, you know, bass and, and all the rest of it, being in a band primarily. And then um, just on the way, you sort of pick up different players. There's a whole, there's so many different bass players I really enjoy, you know, uh, listening to from, it's not all flash, you know, sometimes just laying it down is, is really good. So James Jameson, obviously, is somebody I, you know, enjoy listening to. Yeah, yeah Paul McCartney sort of thing. Um, Super Jesus have had such a great career over more than two decades now. Um, mm. We fast forward to 2021 and it's a, a 20 uh, year anniversary Jet Age tour. When, yeah. <laughs> when you look back at the Jet Age album and, and the making of it, what are the strongest memories? Yeah, we, we made that in, um, in Sydney, Festival, Festival uh, Studios. Eh? Um, the fact that it's 20 years is, is unbelievable in itself, you know, to think it's gone so quick. But um, just it was such a hard time for the band. We had come off the road. We'd been, we'd been record, uh, sorry, we'd been touring for 18 months off our first album. And then we had some personal changes within the band. Um, and so to go into the studio and come out with an album like Jet Age, it was, it was such a liberating um, experience for all of us, really, you know, to, to believe in yourself that you could do it. So I think I took that away from, from the whole process the most, the fact that, yeah, we can keep going on and, yeah, and took strength out of it. Yeah. Ed Buller was the producer who worked with Suede and Psychedelic First. What, what was he like yeah. to work with? Yeah, very smooth customer, Ed Bull. He, uh, he would sit back and, you know, sort of challenge you as to how perhaps you thought of something and maybe, you know, come up with something different, um, ask for maybe two or three versions of the same thing that you may have been doing, which was always good to do and fun. Um, and, and to have everyone's input, you know, we, he sort of brought it to the band that, you know, your instrument was perhaps not, for you to do like we could all be involved with that process so having that on board and everyone's you know it brought the team effort sort of uh, to the whole thing which was uh it's it's really good thing you know for to be part of with ed so mm. yeah. uh, and and some great stories too i might add for the psychedelic first day so mm. yeah. um you were fortunate to to america and record in america 20 years ago um yeah. did you take it all in did you did you appreciate the fact that not every band gets to go overseas uh, you know that's awesome uh sort of question greg it's now i look at it and i said my you know we had our heads down and our bums up so we didn't fully take it in i, I think in hindsight i think we kind of just took it as part of the, the next journey that we were sort of doing as you, you don't get a lot of time to stop and sort of, you know, reflect when you're right in the middle of that sort of, sort of uh, hurricane. But um, we recorded in Atlanta. So not only was it um, uh, different for us to be into a studio with somebody, um, you know, um, it was also a different uh, culturally. So it kind of drew a lot of focus out of the band because we only had each other there. Um, but nowadays I can look back on it and, and kind of go, wow, what a blast. Yeah, it's a good time. 
but at the time it was a hell of a lot of work. Uh, have you got any uh, fave tour stories, any cities where the Super Jesus were bigger than other towns? Yeah, well, especially when we played America. So because we lived there to when we released that first album, Sumo, so we were touring everywhere. And we did something like 72,000 miles in under six months. And that's playing as well. So it was a Tuesday. Was over. We just pack up, drive, pack up and drive. So there's plenty of stories, uh, you know, people pulling out guns and, you know, I'm going to take your trailer full of goods to even just being pulled over by the police, you know, as I'm driving and they're sort of got their hand on the pistol going, you know, show us your license, mate. You know, when you reach for that glove box, do it very, uh, you know, carefully. But um, we, we were fortunate enough to play... Um, some some towns that were aware of the band and then three hours down the road no one had heard of you so yeah so for that it was uh we, we played some we, we also got on mtv at the time so that made a huge difference you know with the american sort of culture you know mtv i didn't realize how powerful that that is you know so um so more and more people coming out you know throughout chicago and and the rest of it, New York. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Um, over 20 years of touring, you must have had some pretty dodgy uh, conditions to play under. Um, what, are, uh, yeah. <laughs> what are some of the... Um, <laughs> oh, man. The, I'm uh, laughing already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you must have played like some crappy band rooms. Mm. Uh, mm. Okay, so we pulled into uh, Vegas. We were playing in Vegas. And we needed some accommodation and we walked in to, to check in. The guy had a handgun on the counter, you know, yeah, classic, you know, the, the lights flickering in the background and oh, I was crazy. Yeah. And then when I got into my room, there was like bullet holes in the walls and, and there was blood on the carpet. I'm like, Oh my God. You know, but you know, it was $15 well spent, I guess. Um, <laughs> there's been plenty of places where you go, Oh my God. But, you know, yeah, you do it, don't you? And it's all about sort of enjoying it, Yeah, I guess. You've had a lot of highs as well. In 2017, you were inducted into the South Australian uh, Music Hall of Fame. How was that experience? Yeah, that was, that was kind of cool. That was something, I guess, um, you know, we hadn't thought about it. We, we were lucky. Um, we, we got notified. Sarah and myself were notified that uh, ourselves and the band uh, along with Chris Tennant and Paul Berryman were being inducted as the original band, which was, it's kind of nice in, in some ways, you know, I'm not really, I, I don't search for that sort of stuff, but it's nice to be recognised by your hometown. I tell you, it, Greg, I think it meant a lot more to my mum yeah. than, uh, than it did to me to go, you know, look, there's my boy. So, yeah, it's good. Yeah, well, that's a nice thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. So the Jet, Jet Age Tour, um, <laughs> you've had uh, rescheduling and cancelling and all things. Oh, yeah, crazy, huh? At the moment, I think you're playing South Australia, Western Australia and Queensland. Is that yeah. the Queensland, yeah. At the moment? Yeah. yeah so and and yeah, as, as you're aware, and I guess everyone's aware, we're, we're all sort of feeling it, aren't we, at the minute? Um, yeah. And it's constantly sort of changing. And, and, and honestly, we, we're... We're going, you know, even up to today, we, we're sort of going, right, we've got rehearsals booked. We've been in rehearsal now for two weeks. Uh, no, sorry, two months. Um, and then it's, uh, do we keep going? Is the borders going to close? Yeah, so WA, we start off on the 23rd of uh, September. Yeah. So four, four shows. What's been your coping me mechanisms throughout the pandemic? What do, what do you do to keep your chin up? Well, I guess kind of, I, I've just been writing music and just being involved, you know, getting into it. Um, listening, you know, uh, Curtis Mayfield, listening to Curtis on Sunday mornings and uh, just being everything to do with music. It's, it's actually, it's in some ways, and I guess you may have heard this in the past, it's kind of put pause on life as we know it for a bit. So I've taken that to, to spend more time around home writing and recording music 
and listening. And listening is just as important to listen to music as it is to, I think anyway, to play it. Yeah. Um, so all going well and the tour goes ahead. Um, what's the plan set list wise? Will you play Jet Age end to end? Oh, yeah, we will. Yeah, which we hadn't done before. So I'm really, in, it, in rehearsal, it's sounding really good. Yeah, so we're pretty pretty stoked with it. Some some of the small nuances with, you know, that might be a piano or a keyboard, we, we're sort of transposing onto a guitar or bass guitar. And, you know, those sort of small things are uh, fun to do. Um, so, yeah, we're going to play the whole the whole album from start to finish, which we, we haven't really done in the past. So yeah. it's going to be a good challenge. Um, and what about your stage rig? Um, what's it like now compared to when you started? Yeah, okay. Um, so now I'm playing Ampeg, a classic bass amp, the 810 and stuff like that. And um, I play, you know, Fender basses. Um, and it's pretty much been the same all the way through. I have played a Gibson Thunderbird for a while, uh, which I still really enjoy. Um, and the only th the only difference really with my gear is I've downsized it to one rig instead of two side by side. It's just the one now. Um, yeah, so that's that's all. That's all I'm doing. Yeah. All I'm playing. <clears throat> yeah. your, your main base. Is there any interesting story to how you uh, acquired that? Yeah, well, I got that when we were in the um, uh, going to record Sumo in the states. I had, I'd been touring Australia up until that point, um, you know, for two years, just with sort of cheaper bases that I'd always remodeled to try and make good. Um, and when we got to America, they, they kind of went, hey, we've got some money for you. That's money, what? <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah. So you've got two, a choice here. Would you like a music man or would you like a Fender bass? I went, oh man. And so I picked him up and I said, oh, I've got to have this. And it turned out to be a American, a 60, a 62 re, uh, American vintage reissue bass that I've I, I recorded with and and uh, and I've toured with that the whole time. So yeah, and I've just picked up a, a Fender uh, Jazz Custom as well, a 64 Jazz Custom, which I'm, you know, pretty um, you know, I'm terrible with guitars. Like I've got another. <laughs> I want to get in a, a Rick and Backer as well. So yeah, just just love playing them. You know. Yeah. But anyway, they're my main bases. Yeah, I, I believe Jason's been building guitars and, and a, a, special, a special Jet Age guitar. What can you tell me about that? Yeah. Well, this this is an idea we, uh, Jay had. He'd been building some guitars at home for a while. And he wanted to do something. He had gone through some personal uh, problems uh, with his family um, and his father. And uh, he wanted to do something. And, and he sort of came to the band and said, look, how about we, we maybe do an auction or give some money towards brain cancer? And, and we thought that was a fantastic idea. And he said, I, he went even one better and said, I'll make a guitar for it. And he's doing it all by hand. Uh, he's in that shed of his every night and the idea is to take it out on tour and play it and then auction it off with money and proceeds going to brain cancer so uh, it's yeah it's it's looking fantastic we we get daily updates with how it's you know the color here and the fret work and and everything else he's done an amazing job yeah he's really enjoying it yeah that's great I might have to hit him up for a bass at some point yeah <laughs> So which um, Super Jesus song are you most proud of for the bass part that you laid down? Uh, yeah. Um, I kind of like Down Again. It was a bit of a challenge, you know, at that point when we first started playing it. Um, there's a few songs that are technically a little, you know, they push you sort of in a live sense. And so you're kind of always looking over your shoulder at the, the tempos behind you with the drums going, you know, keep it easy. You know, I'm not that quick. But um, yeah, I'd say Down Again is probably one of the ones I'm, I'm proud of. Yeah, the, the bass line on that. And um, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I'd say that. The rest, you know, and it doesn't necessarily mean because of technicality or anything. I can be just as proud of the middle eight of, uh, of um, uh, uh, one of our, so anyway, I can be just as proud of something that's just laying down a 4-4, you know? Um, so, yeah. What are the main things you've learned about recording bass parts over the years? Oh, I'd say relax. You know, just relax. And so gravity, when we uh, recorded gravity, we're talking about those bases earlier. I had all my bases lined up and I went to the studio. There's was, there was like a, there's about a $250 base sitting there. I thought, I'm going to have a little sneaky go at this. So they, they're in the control room. Well, I have a, you know, how's this sound? It sounds great. Well, what, what base was that? I said, well, it's this one here, you know. It was just sitting around in the studio. So I did that with, with that by about 200 bucks. Um, but I've, I've kind of learned that, you know, keep your stuff uh, set up properly, you know, keep it in tune and, uh, and just relax into it and have fun, have fun. It's, it's the red light, you know, doesn't mean, oh my God, <laughs> you know, you mean just, just enjoy it, you yeah. know. Um, the last couple of times I spoke with Sarah, uh, she's been talking about new Super Jesus material. Uh, where are you at with that? Oh, yeah, we've been uh, writing some material as we spoke earlier. You know, just that whole time being at home, I've, I've spent, um, you know, writing songs and just sending them just on the inbox. Here you go. Here you go. Or ideas. Let's call them ideas. Um, and Sarah's just started to bite on a few now. and. So we've got about three or four songs sort of sitting there. We've got another perhaps eight that haven't been worked on fully yet. So, yeah, we're just going to keep going with it and see what, you know, we can get some sort of continuity with them all. Yeah. Um, when COVID gets to the point where things are opened up again, um, what would be, what's the plan for the band and uh, maybe other projects that you're doing? Oh, yeah, I think we're just going to get out and do some touring if we can and, and go to these places that we, we've cancelled. We've cancelled so many. And not just us. I know there's, everyone else has too. But I think just get out and do some shows and, and feel good about it and see, you know, some smiles back in people's faces a bit, you know. So that'll be good. That's the plan. Yeah. Right, Stuart Rudd, it's been great to chat and uh, thanks for joining. Uh, thanks, Greg. Awesome, mate. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. And thanks for your support.